Hello and a very warm welcome to Money Control. Today we have with us the MD and CEO of Tata Power, Mr. Praveen Sinha. A very warm welcome to Money Control, sir. Uh, good morning, Shweta. Such a pleasure to be on your show of Money Control. Thank you, sir. Uh, we'll uh, just start off with the question. Startup Power has recorded a uh, net profit for the 15th consecutive quarter. I want to understand what has been the strategy behind uh, this uh, achievement of, for the company. So what has happened in last few years, uh, we decided that we will concentrate on few growth areas and uh, consolidate on our existing operations. And that is what uh, has reflected in better performance for the company and consistent performance for the company. Also, the big trend change that we see in this quarter is uh, that last year, uh, there was a huge profit that we got uh, in the first quarter also and in subsequent quarter from the coal mining operations uh, due to increase in coal prices. Uh, this year, that uh, impact is not there. It's a very small impact. And uh, uh, we find that our existing operations and some of the growth areas where we had invested last year and we continue to invest in this year, uh, those have done exceedingly well. And that's uh, they are getting stabilized. And I think that's what uh, is uh, the interesting part of it, that how uh, we are trying to move from some of the non-core profit areas to core profit areas and that uh, is a very strong foundation that we are setting for the company to continue to do well in the subsequent quarters i'll come to the uh, india perspective energy transition is playing out to be you know a big theme globally and countries are now kind of competing with each other in terms of incentives or whatever for green hydrogen and battery storage in that context what should india do to kind of develop these uh, in in the country and you know what are the challenges that you see so when we talk of energy transition uh, we need to look at uh, the whole power sector in totality uh, what we are seeing is uh, we are transitioning and uh, focusing a lot on uh, renewable power which means uh, it's a mix of solar wind hydro pumped hydro and battery storage. And to that is also getting hydrogen added. And I think uh, these all have a role to play uh, when we talk of the energy transition. It's not just either or, it, these are all, all of them are and. So solar has to work with the uh, wind so that we come up with hybrid solutions. Solar and wind have to work with hydro or pumped hydro so that we start looking at 24 seven. We also need to look at solar and wind with the battery storage. We need to look at solar and wind with hydrogen. So I think each of them have a role to play uh, and depending upon the application where it has to be utilized, uh, one will see that uh, each of them will uh, have a significant role uh, when we do the full transition. And this is going to take time. It is not going to happen uh, very quickly. Uh, there are challenges in terms of intermittency of power. There are challenges of cost. How do we bring down the cost of uh, hydrogen or battery storage or even pumps, hydro? So I think uh, there are a whole lot of things that needs to be carried out. And uh, in uh, uh, Tata Power, we are very conscious of our responsibility that how do we take forward each of these initiatives and uh, we calibrate it in such a way so that uh, the end user gets the benefit of these technologies, but also gets it at an affordable tariff, uh, which makes it uh, financially viable. Right. And in terms of infra opportunity, what, what is the infra opportunity that you see in India and what more needs to be done, you know, to boost investment and execution, especially in the energy? So I think uh, the, the, there are a lot of policy support that is coming from the government side in terms of uh, various bids which are coming uh, for large utility scale projects and uh, for setting up those projects, large investments are required which uh, will come from India, but we'll also see a lot of foreign capital coming in uh, either through direct investment 
or through the uh, financial institution investors who come over here. Uh, we will also see a large amount of investment that will come through the technology uh, interventions that are taking place, whether it is in the energy storage or it is uh, in hydrogen. And there again, along with technology, uh, you will have uh, investors who will come and uh, put capital. So I think uh, there will be huge amount of uh, changes that you would see uh, in uh, the power sector and also uh, in associated sectors, especially in the automobile sector, in transport sector, you will see a large number of electric vehicles coming in and the technology to support that. And also the whole ecosystem, whether it is in terms of the EV charging or the whole uh, practice of how uh, these facilities are provided better to the consumers and they experience a seamless experience of uh, uh, using electric vehicle right across uh, the country uh, for any sort of travel, short distance, long distance, intercity travel. So I, I think uh, there are great uh, opportunities and considering that India is one of the fastest growing economy and there is an aspirational India which is expecting a lot of uh, improvement in their quality of life. Uh, I think uh, this is a decade of India and maybe in the next few decades are decades of India. Right. Talking about aspirations, uh, India has the aspiration of becoming a $5 trillion economy. And many say that this is within reach and could possibly be achieved sooner than FY27. So in that context, uh, can the Indian power sector, with all its challenges, uh, support this growth of uh, being a $5 trillion economy? Absolutely. The Indian power sector will be a big participant in the transformation. And uh, when we talk of $5 trillion economy, uh, I think that the power sector will play a very, very prominent role in uh, bringing about the development, the changes that are taking place uh, in terms of uh, usage of power as well as in terms of uh, abil availability of power. So I think the Indian power sector is fully geared up. It has demonstrated time and again that it has the ability to add capacities. It has the ability to cater to the needs. And um, uh, whatever circumstances have been there, even during COVID period, the power sector performed very well. Uh, they are the silent warriors who ensured that uh, even when people work from home, the availability of power is there. So I think the uh, power sector will continue to play a very, very important role. And uh, I'm sure the Indian power sector is fully geared up for this challenge. Great. So India, I mean, first of all, I would like to ask you, are you bullish on India? And follow up? Absolutely. I'm very bullish on India uh, because the, in India, the demand is so huge. We still oh, have, uh, you know, uh, uh, I am very bullish on India because the demand is very high and we have seen that the per capita consumption in India is still very low, uh, much lower than the world average and of course much lower than the developed countries. So I think there is a great opportunity and also to leapfrog the technology. We can actually now uh, use the renewable power, use some of the smart grid technologies and thereby now uh, able to use the power in a more efficient and uh, and in a much cleaner way than what has been done earlier. This would be my final question, Mr. Sinha. Uh, you know, uh, the emergency clause, that is Section 11 of the Electricity Act, has been in place for the longest time this year, I believe. Uh, so could you give us uh, give an assessment of the impact? Or, because everything is passed through to the consumers uh, with regards to these orders now. So what is the what could be the or what is already the impact of these orders in terms of the power tariffs that goes on to the consumer? So the, the, uh, the uh, Section 11 uh, directs the generating companies to generate power uh, on the condition that uh, the tariff will be determined and will be cost reflective by the respective regulator. Uh, in our case also, the, that has been done. And uh, that is as for the Electricity Act itself. And uh, uh, while in the initial period, the cost of coal was very high and the tariffs were a little bit on the higher side. 
uh, we have seen in last uh, few months the cost of coal has come down and to that extent the tariff has also come down uh, to the consumers uh, and uh, we expect uh, that uh, with uh, the constant uh, reduction in coal prices we will continue to uh, pass on the benefit of lower uh, prices to the consumer and uh, n n this is a good uh, reference point for any subsequent uh, arrangement or agreement that needs to be finalized. Even Aptel was surprised, uh, Tata Power being one of the rarest discoms coming up to at least uh, for the first time probably appeal for a reduction of uh, power tariffs uh, against the MERC's orders. Uh, what prompted that? Is it is it that stiff a competition now in the power sector? It, it, it's a question of uh, there were certain aspects which was not considered uh, while determining the tariff and uh, we wanted that those should be considered so that the benefit of a lower cost gets passed on to the consumer and uh, whatever we did was in consumer interest uh, and uh, to ensure that not only uh, reliable power is there but affordable and economical cost power is uh, provided to the consumers. Oh, my final thing would be on PSPs, pumped hydro storage projects. Uh, Tata Power just recently announced a huge MOU with Maharashtra government for, I believe, 2,800 megawatts. Uh, so beyond, I mean, previously when you spoke to me, you had told that Tata Power would invest in PSPs in its own existing hydropower projects. Uh, but is, is there any plan beyond this Maharashtra MOU uh, for now that you're planning? Uh, so we have signed the 2,800 megawatt, uh, which is for uh, setting up uh, at two locations. Uh, and right now, since uh, we have existing uh, uh, reservoirs and the existing plant and uh, existing dams which are there, uh, we believe that uh, our cost of production will be much uh, more uh, efficient compared to going for a greenfield location. Uh, secondly, the period of construction will be much faster because uh, the land and other uh, things are already, the infrastructure is already available over there. So right now we are concentrating on uh, setting up the uh, 2.8 gigawatt of uh, pumped hydro. Uh, once we have completed, we will may examine it. But uh, mind you, we are right now only using two of our reservoirs. Uh, we have six of them and to that extent, we have much larger opportunity. Uh, to develop and enhance the capacity over here itself. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Sinha. Uh, until we meet again, thank you.